Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good morning, Kuru, Jordy, Alms, Magshin, Lurib, Svensson. Morning. <laughs> yeah. It's Friday the 13th. Interesting. Good morning, Captain Jetlag. Irish nonsense. Tormod. All the fantastic people. Fantastic. Mila, good morning. I am so ready for a weekend. I have a plan. My plan for the weekend is to throw out the Christmas tree. That is my weekend plan. And consume some beers, I think. And most likely, most likely stream something on Saturday. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. But I think it's a Saturday stream coming, most likely. We'll see what the what the missus says what she wants to do. I think Irish nonsense might have had uh, snow uh, and commuting joys. As soon as something changes in, in UK, like London, communications, everything just completely fails. Captain Jetlag. Yeah, so prima nocta. <laughs> what? Makes no sense. Um, Uh, Lurib, yeah, something like that, I think it is, isn't it? Either way, I'm fed up with the Christmas tree. It's gone out. It's going to fly out the window. <sighs> All right. How about throwing me some topics? Let's get the ball rolling. And uh, <laughs> I'm still laughing at that. Free my dog, nothing. Stupid. Um, <sighs> throw me some topics, please. Let's do it. Animal astronaut. Ah, oh, please be number one. Tomahawk. Half rotten pirate witch. Ooh. Topic number three or one. That would be awesome. Wow, that's a lot of topics. All right, let's let's throw it. How many are they actually? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, we can actually do 2. Right? It can be 12 then. Let's see. Topic is 6. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Silly goose. <laughs> Silly goose. That's interesting. Svensson. I think this is your first topic in a really long time, Svensson. I think the last one was uh, Man Bear Pig, right? That's true, Captain Jetlag. That's very true. That's true, Tormund. Oh, if we, we experimented with uh, two dice, obviously, 
you all scream foul. So. Let's not do that again. <laughs> it was like one after the other. Oh no, topic number one is out of the question. Alright, sorry. Sorry! <laughs> Silly goose. I have no idea. I'm gonna draw some monster. Let's see. Silly goose. That refers to someone being childish, right? You silly goose. Oh, hey. Play nice. So, what's your plans for the weekend? Like I said, my plan is to throw the Christmas tree out and um, uh, mm, hopefully do a Saturday stream. I think also I'd really like to go to like a spa and have like a jacuzzi and swimming with the kids. I think I might do that as well. Go and have some fun in the water. I think that would be nice. Um, Lurib about structural uh, studies is when you break down what you see into, um, you know, like a structure, the structure of it. So if you have an arm, you just don't copy the picture of the arm or the real life version of the arm you you break down the arm where where's the you know where does the muscle connect what's the basic shapes what is the perspective like what is the cross line across the volume you know so it's just not visual copying but you're actually structurally breaking it down analyzing it and figuring out like what happens if you rotate the camera so that the camera angle changes? Would you still be able to draw it? You know, things like that. So when you see in anatomy, especially, um, uh, Captain Jetlag, I have switched curse filter on. I don't think it's something you can switch off. Good morning, George. That's cool, uh, Mila. Mila <laughs> Carr. Oh. Uh, well, usually, Lurib, when you see um, people doing mistakes in anatomy, it's like 90% of the time is uh, structurally wrong. So by doing structural studies, you, you just break down anatomy and f like, you know, like uh, Bridgman or Loomis, they, Loomis thinks in lines. I think Bridgman or Hogarth, they think in volume um, and they simplify shapes and so on. And uh, it's just, a, it's just like learning the, the, the shapes more and practicing and understanding, you know, rather than just blind copy. Hey, Sofa Strangler. Good morning. Uh, Lurib, you should look at drawings. 
or if you're drawing something from imagination if you draw anatomy from imagination you then have to do studies of your anatomy and correct it by doing by studying the correct version and then redrawing your version for example Hey Kimson, Kimson one or Kimson none? <laughs> I'm assuming it's Kimson one. Welcome. Yeah, I'm. I'm really looking forward to the weekend. I think, it, like I said, go swim with the kids or something will be really, really nice. I also want to read more on uh, James Gurney, the, the the book for the realist painter. I have always trying to to squeeze in some time to read that. But I also want to do experiments with uh, his his approach to gamut and painting with it. So maybe uh, on Saturday night uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, do some experimentation with uh, palettes. I really want to like uh, learn that stronger. I find a lot of times when I go straight to paint or when I start painting uh, grayscale like a lot of problems where I, I'm, I'm redoing a lot is the kind of the confidence in a palette I'm always searching for the palette because obviously it's not a planned palette I'm, I'm, I'm just reacting to it to my painting um, so obviously that is an issue I feel I need to correct because because I feel it's just reactionary rather than than like I can plan ahead like I can do with anatomy and so on. So I think it means I need to practice more palettes and gamut gamuts or gamut ranges or whatever you can explain however you can explain it I did try to explain it the other day with um, like the color wheel and um, like making a mask over the color wheel and, and and you get the palette that way like a triangle or mask over on top of it and so I wanna I want to see maybe I can conjure up some quick way to get a good random palette when I start I need to check in how that that Uh, Michal, I think so. I think I might on Saturday do that. Um, the shaded tones are taken from the palette. Um, even the shaded tones are taken from the palette. Uh, I don't know what you mean, but you, you, theoretically you sample from the the, like the color wheel that the, that the mask defines so you have should have all the range there but uh, that's what I'm saying is I want to experiment with it and, and, and kind of try to figure it out how to apply it because it's really interesting um, info 
and I think it's I need it. So it's definitely something I gotta um, experiment with. I think um, there's always, I always enjoy uh, trying to break uh, my, my process, like by, by challenging it or, or by experimenting with how I do my approaches. It's always fun to learn new things oh no I did forget the timer thanks Schmaze. Um <laughs> yeah so usually it starts maybe at 12 past so it has gone 14 minutes. Is that correct? Let's say I have 15 minutes left. Probably will be around correct time. 37, 40, something like that. That's great, great, great. Thanks for the reminder, um, Schmaze. Very kind of you. I also think I, I want to play some video games during the weekend. I had a like I was looking at on YouTube about this game called uh, Escape from Tarkov, like a Daisy new version of Daisy kind of zombie survival. But in in this Escape from Tarkov, there's no zombies. It's just uh, like players, but it looked really cool because the the way they've done the weapon handling and the depth of like weapon customization and so on it's crazy crazy deep and uh, the way you have to reload and all these things was very based on reality and uh, like if you had didn't have magazines in your in your like tactical vest or front pockets um, you you can't really reload you have to go into the menu to reload uh, by like dragging but if you have it equipped where you should have it equipped uh, you can just you know quickly reload and all these little nuances and things you have to do in order to make it w run smoother was very cool like based on reality in a way um, obviously it's a game so it's not full reality but it seems to be done really really well it's still uh, like a early on. Like it's not finished yet, and all these things. But uh, you can see it on YouTube. Pretty cool. Made me excited about it. Just not because of, like I want to play it in that sense of, of, of hunting other players, but uh, the looting system is is intriguing. I'm a definitely a fan of finding loot in games. It's uh, I love the feeling of like finding something new in the game and and uh, testing it and putting
putting it on or whatever it is. Uh, the escape from Tarkov. Yeah. Yeah, it looks very intense. It looks <laughs> probably a bit uh, too intense for my taste. Like, if I would play it, it would be very, uh, it would be very casual and not hardcore at all. And I'm, I fear that a game like that, you have to be quite hardcore to uh, <laughs> to enjoy it. Uh, but as it's uh, very early on, you know, it, it's not finished yet, and the game seems like you're lo loading um, modules of the game. But uh, supposedly, uh, the whole game will allow you to go between modules without uh, loading a separate level. You know, so you can just go from, let's say, like the the factory to the to the forest, you know. But currently, what it looks like is you have to load each segment uh, separately. Um, well, you know, the game is not finished, but it looked really looked really cool. And what what I was really surprised of was that it's um, running on um, Unity engine, which I had I would have not guessed seeing the game. But uh, they've managed to push the Unity engine really, really well in that regards. Looks fantastic. Uh, Captain Jetlag, well, in the sense of like how they do the reload, if you don't have it um, like equipped, you you have a um, obviously you need the ammunition or clips, uh, and you uh, take bullets, put them in the clip, and then you put the clip on the gun, and then you have a reload. But if you have reloaded uh, clips already prepared in your inventory on in your in your tactical rig. So when you hit reload, like the R button in the game, the the character removes one clip, puts it in the vest, and takes the other fully stocked clip and puts it in the gun. Um, so that in that sense, was what I really enjoyed with that is that you can't just reload and you will magically have a full clip, but your ammo counter doesn't really change only by the bullets you reload. You know, like how it is in all games. But now it's like if you reload, you remove all those bullets and put them in the inventory, and you have to have a freshly filled magazine to take its place. And the magazine with the old bullets stays in the old magazine. So when you have a calm moment, you have to go in <laughs> and uh, manage your bullets by by adding them back into the gun, which is which is interesting, you know. Yeah, and Kimson, if you reload too fast, apparently there's this kind of fast reload where he just uh, pops the magazine out and puts a new one. But the magazine that you reloaded, if there's any bullets in them, they're in the magazine on the on the ground. So you have to pick it up after the firefight, <laughs> you know, or whenever you, whenever you can. Which is a really cool aspect, I think. It's um, definitely more immersive and uh, has a, a big tactical element to it which is intriguing that that aspect of of chess play you know that anyone everyone has to be tactical with like how they manage the, their ammunition and, and reloads and so on uh, but the whole game is based around principles like that, so it's just not the ammunition. Um, I, I was really intrigued by the game. Uh, it's in alpha, which means um, they're still adding features to the game. I'm hoping um, 
that they will go to beta soon, which means uh, it's a feature stop, which means they don't add new functions, they just make the functions better, like bug fixing and so on. So I'm hoping, hoping I'll be able to play that game in not too uh, long. It looks like a really cool game. <laughs> Lurib, yeah, Frankie on PC. He's he's cool. He's a, he's a funny guy, and he played it. Yeah, it was a, it's, it's a nice game. Uh, the name of the game is Escape from Tarkov. Escape from Tarkov. Uh, Svensson. Uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, looking at the players play the game, um, they have more than one magazine in their tactical rig, uh, like the chest, you know, where you have the, like the military have their web uh, ammunition and stuff. Um, and uh, you can see it becomes this second nature thing that they reload, they shoot, and then uh, as soon as the enemy is dead, they take cover, and then they uh, manage content, like what they need to do by, by uh, reloading, stocking ammunition, uh, you know, whatever they need to do. And it becomes, a, it just becomes an element of, of, of of control, like something you just need to do in order to to win. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to fix that, but you don't want any situations where your gun is not working. And I, I mean, I, I can see where you say it, it becomes a chore, but what I love is that it becomes it's a global thing. Everyone has to do it, so it becomes more uh, more like the rules of the game rather than. Uh, an annoying part. Like, I mean, you could have a. I mean, you could have one primary weapon and a secondary weapon on your back. So you could have, let's say, a, a machine gun and a shotgun, and you could swap between them, uh, and so on. Or two of the same. But they still need ammunition. And for a shotgun with uh, with uh, single shells, like you had to um, have shells available in your pockets, so that when you hit reload, he takes shells from the pocket and puts them in the shotgun. Yeah, it, the game is definitely hardcore. I mean, it's it's not. Uh, Casual game in any ways or uh, in the, by any means, you know. But I was impressed by it. The, first of all, the, the the way it looks and that it's on in, in on Unity engine was it's like what this can't be Unity, but it is. And uh, also another cool like tactical element I saw recently, some player figured out that every light source they can shoot out. And there is uh, night vision goggles. So if you're like in a funky area or you're playing at night because it's day and night cycle, uh, and there's some light shining, and if you have night vision goggles, obviously you should you just shoot out the light, and any light can be shut out so that it becomes dark and you just switch on your night vision. It's really cool. I was very impressed by that. That was, that was really like a nice. Like you've always wanted that in games to that extent, but now in this game, every light source you can shoot out and and you can hide in there. You know? And night time in the game was actually really really dark. You know, so that if you didn't have night vision goggles, you were definitely in a you know, in an exposed situation.
Sense and yeah, I think I think uh, one thing that they will do is uh, have like it seems to be at least because when you when uh, how do you explain when they kill uh, players at the end when you escape or die you'll see what kind of level of people you killed and I think as there is levels I think that might be. Uh, servers where you if you go higher ranking you will move up uh, a tier you know so that you you don't go up against newbies um, I don't think anyone would enjoy that but or maybe they will just go the like the hardcore way of you know, oops well it's not our problem that you are a beginner <laughs> Which is which is which is very uh, not user friendly for a beginner and a casual player, but maybe they don't want casual players. Who knows? Yeah, sense so not. I think matchmaking is in the because it, in the looking at people playing the game, they are definitely being uh, grouped with uh, people. So there's some sort of matchmaking going on. Alright, around now I'd say probably time's up. Probably have uh, some more minutes, but um, ah, I'll call it the day. It's Friday. We'll most likely have a beer tonight. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Have a fantastic day, everyone. And. Um, Good luck with everything. I will most likely maybe hang out at Discord today. Uh, don't have that much uh, heavy load workload today. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I will see you there. And thanks, uh, Svensenot, for the topic. It became a silly goose monster, I don't know, floating thing. Who knows, who knows? <laughs> Gotta get down on Friday. Mm hmm, Captain Jetlag. Yes, definitely. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, have a really good day, everyone. And good night, Georg. I know it's very late for you. Um, all right. Bye, all. Here it comes.